Hello guys and welcome back to another video. So in this today's video is going to be about importing your character and setting up the locomotion system for it on Unreal Engine 5. I've already did a video about this, but this is kind of outdated, so I'm doing I'm going to do a new one. Uh, so the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna have your Unreal Engine 5 installed, and I'm going to use this part character here, which is rigged to the UE4 and UE5. Uh, skeletons for the Unreal Engine and I'm going to go ahead and download it. It's going to take some time. So here's going to uh, ask for the project that the part is going to be installed. But in this case we're going to uh, open the Unreal Engine 5. This version that I'm using right now is the 5.0 so if you don't have this version you can download it for free. So here we go. So here we're going to go to the tab called Games and to the third person. So here is going to ask if you want to the to add the started pack, the started content pack. Um, so this is the additional content pack that comes with the UE5 project. And we're going to go ahead and enable this option here. We're going to choose where the project the location is going to be at. We're going to choose the third person template. And here in the project name is going to be like uh, started. I'm just going to call mine tutorial. I'm going to choose blueprints. And that's it. Let's go ahead and create. So while it is creating, we can go ahead to the Epic Games launcher. And we can add the pirate to our project. So how we can do that? Let's go to the marketplace. Let's type here pirate. So this one is free. Let's download it and add to project. I'm going to search for tutorial. And here it is. Now I'm going to add to project. <clears throat> Alright, it looks like the addition is complete. Failed to import started content back, failed to create asset started content. Let's hit OK. And let's see what we've got here. If you press on play, you have the normal mannequin from the Unreal Engine 5. But I also have the mannequin of the Unreal Engine 4, which is what we're going to use. So if you go to Characters, Mannequin UE4, you're going to find the folders. So each folder contains a different asset. This one is for the animation. This one for the materials, the meshes. So what we're worried about here is the mesh and the skeleton of the mesh. So here, this is the skeleton and this is the skeletal mesh. So if we double click on that, so here's the UE4 mannequin, right? We can choose here to preview the animation and this is the only animation that comes with the UE5 pack. Okay. So if you go to content and go to pirate, this is the folder that is going to be appeared when you add the pirate to the project. So after you add the pirate, this folder is going to appear for you. And here we have a lot of uh, folders with different assets. So what you're worried about here is the mesh for the UE4 skeleton. So let's click on here. And here we have different body parts. This is the first time that I've downloaded this pirate pack here, by the way. So I don't know exactly what it's going to contain on the folders. So here, if you click on full, you're going to have the full character body. We're going to double click on the pirate full body to see what it looks like. So here, as you can see, the first time I can notice that there is cloth simulation going on here, which is pretty cool. I like it a lot. I like the cloth simulation a lot. 
So we're going to go ahead and just wait for it to prepare the shaders. If you want to prepare the shaders of the whole content, you can right click on the part the folder. And here we're going to click to validate assets in the folder. So we're going to click in yes. Then it's going to compile all the shaders for you. And you don't need to go into uh, each asset to do that. So it's going to compile everything for you. So you don't need to worry about compiling, uh, compiling other shaders. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead uh, and do. If you go ahead here on the award settings tab, you're going to see that we are using the default ball class, which is the third person character, which is this character right here. So let's go ahead and go to the third person character of blueprints. And this is the blueprint that we are using by default. Now we're going to go ahead and double click on that. So remember that this tutorial is for beginners. So if you are a complete beginner and you don't know where to start, uh, this is the video for you. And if you go to the viewport, you're going to be able to see that we have the UE5 mannequin. What do I mean by the UE5 mannequin is that the uh, Epic Games has released the Unreal Engine uh, 3, 4, and 5. So for the Unreal Engine 4 version, we have the Unreal Engine 4 mannequin, which is this one right here. And when the Epic Games has released the Unreal Engine 5, then they also have updated the mannequin, but they also have updated the skeleton of the mannequin. If you click here on the skeleton, you're going to be able to see that we have the skeleton hierarchy, hierarchy, and we have one, two, three, four, five spines. I think that's the only change that they have added on the UE5 mannequin, UE5 skeleton. Right? And if you take a look at the skeleton hierarchy of the UE4 mannequin, you're going to be able to see that we have only three spines. Right? So they, they are changing things a little bit for the updated version of the UE5 mannequin. But uh, it's up to you to use to choose if you want to use the UE4 mannequin or the UE5. It's totally up to you. If you want to use UE5, uh, animations, UE5 characters, you're going to make sure, you're going to have to make sure that the UE5 uh, character that you're using is, of course, rigged to the UE5 skeleton hierarchy. And you also have to make sure that you're using the UE5 animations for the UE5 mannequin. If you have UE4 mannequin, if you have UE4 animations that you want to use to your UE5 character, then you're going to be able to uh, retarget these animations so you're going to be able to use UE4 animations to do your UE5 you're going to be able to use your UE4 animations to your UE5 character okay uh, maybe I'm going to teach you later how you can do that actually I'm going to use actually I'm going to teach you how you can do that right now so let's go to the third person map and how we can retarget the UE5 animations back to the U4 animations, back to the U4 skeleton. Uh, so we're going to do the following. So let's go to the characters. Um, let's go to mannequins, animations. And here's the animation blueprint. This is the main one. This is called animation blueprint menu. If you double click on that, you're going to see that we have a state machine in here. We have two state machines, each one of them containing states. And inside the states, we have the animation to be played. In this case, we are playing the idle animation. And here for the walk run, we're going to be playing when the character, of course, is gaining speed. When the character is walking, we're going to be playing in deep lens place. And this is going to necessarily blend uh, the walk, run, and idle, walk and run cycles uh, smoothly well, smoothly blended. So they're going to be smoothly bending, blended using this blend space here. Uh, so how we can, the, the thing that we need to do right now is to make it so that these animations here can work for the UE4 
uh, character you for a mannequin, right? So what we're gonna do, we're going to go to the third person character blueprints. I can either create a copy of this uh, mannequin here, or I can create one by scratch. Uh, I'm not going to create one by scratch because there is some settings that needs to be tweaked. So I'm going to just go ahead and copy and duplicate this third person character. So we have a different copy of this. So we're going to choose uh, the name of UE4 and call it character. Now we have our own character. So here, as you can see, it comes with this uh, controls here. These events can be attributed in the project settings. So if you go to the edit project settings, you're going to be able to see that we have the inputs. But it, we, I think we don't need to worry about this now. I'm just showing you that you can attribute controls. For example, if you want to use your right mouse click uh, button, you can assign it here. So you can add a new axis mapping, uh, a new action mapping. If it's a button, you're pressing. And if it's a joystick control, you can add a axis mapping. So you can define the settings here, right? So these events are triggered because there is a action event here that is created inside the project settings here in the bindings. So you can actually call these events here for the for controlling the character. Okay. Um, so now here we have the controls to control the camera and the character. Nothing to worry about. Now, if you go to the viewport, as you can see, you can see the character visually. So here on the mesh, we are going to uh, clear everything up. So I'm going to choose none here. And here I'm going to choose my pirate. I can also choose to choose the animation, the ASCII mannequin, which is the U4, which is the default U4 mannequin. But I'm going to use my pirate character that we've downloaded there. So if you go ahead and click here on pirate, and I want the U4 mesh, U4 mannequin, sorry, U4 skeleton. So here we have uh, two separate options. If you want to choose your character to have four parts, four body parts into the blueprint, you can choose that. But if you want to have separate parts, you can also choose that. So the difference is, is by, if you want to have like maybe like the difference of choosing to have separate body parts is that maybe when you shoot the character hand, then the character hand is just going to drop on the ground and it's going to be all messy. So if you want to do that, then that's fine to use separate body parts. But for this tutorial, it's going to be more simple. We're going to use the full body parts and the character looks like this. It's very cool. It has some cloth simulation, I guess. Yeah, it has. So I'm going to browse to the assets, and here I'm going to select in here the skeletal mesh. So I'm going to use selected assets from the content browser. I'm going to just go ahead and close this, close some, some of these tabs. I don't need it. Okay, let's just compile, save. And here we have our character. So now we need a animation class, which is going to be driven the, the way that the animation is. Um, so the animation class is used for making the behavior of the animations, how the character is going to behave in different states. So the animation class is going to handle all the animation and it's going to control how the animation, how the character is going to behave in certain situations right so we're going to create a new animation class but f uh, for doing better for speeding the video up so we have a trick here so the trick is just to retarget the animations retarget the whole animation blueprint so what's this going to do 
it's going to take all the animations from the U4, from the U5 menu, from the U5 mannequin. It's going to take all the animations and convert them to the UE4 mannequin skeleton. So we're going to right click, retarget animation assets, duplicate and retarget animation blueprint. So here on the IKEA retargeter, we're going to choose the right retargeter. So we're going to choose the right retargeter. In this case, it's UE5 to UE4. And we're going to choose a folder. Actually, it can be anywhere, doesn't matter. So here it is. I'm just going to compile, save all. And here we have our clean animation blueprint. I'm just going to name this to ABP UE4 so that we cannot confuse with the others with the ABP menu. All right, so if you go to the preview scene, you can actually choose the preview character that's shown on the scene here. So we can choose Pirate. Here it's not showing for us for some reason, but we are going to find out why. Uh, I think the reason why is because our character is not rigged to the U4 skeleton. So we're going to right click, assign skeleton, and we're going to choose the UE4 skeleton here. But I have to make sure that this is the right animation, this is the right skeleton that I'm trying to reference. So I'm going to go to Browse, and as you can see, we are, uh, we are using the S key mannequin skeleton. So I have to assign this mesh, this skeletal mesh, the S key mannequin skeleton. But as you can notice, we have different ones, but I guess it's the second one because it has the underlying skeleton right after. So we're going to accept. All right, save all the packages. Now we are able to choose our pirate. There we go. Now we're going to compile, save. And here on the event graph, as you can see, we have the event blueprint initialize animation. So we're going to set the references to only character when this blueprint initializes. And we're also going to only update values if the character is valid. This is just for preventing any issues that might happen. So it's good to have the is valid node. So it's going to check if the character is valid in the world before we can set uh, the, the references for the character and all the variables, right? So here there is a sequence where it's going to update all these values here. It's going to update the velocity of the character movement. And we're going to get the vector length x, y to get the ground speed. Uh, we are going to use the current acceleration. And if the character is moving, then it's going to set this variable to true. And here it's going to check if the character is falling and blah, blah, blah. So we can create a new pin here. First, we're going to get an event called begin play. And here we're going to cast to our U4 character. Out of the object, out of the object, we're going to get player going to get try get power owner and now we're going to promote it to a variable so the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to access the variables that are inside the event graph inside the characters blueprint which is this one so by doing this I can just get the variables just by getting this, get the U4 character. I'm going to convert this as a validated get because I want to check first if it is valid. Now out of this, I can get any variable that is inside the character's blueprint. All right. I'm going to create one simple variable here called jump. Call 
all this has jumped. Just as an example, I'm going to duplicate this variable here. And I'm going to set this variable to true when the character presses the jump button. And as soon as he releases, then I'm going to turn off the has jumped variable to be disabled. Now I'm going to go to the ABP menu, go to the event graph. Sorry, I, I think we don't need the ABP menu, so I'm going to just close it. And I'm going to get is jumped, get jumped, get has jumped. I'm going to promote it to a variable and plug the is valid there. Now I'm going to go to the animation graph. And here, as you can see, we have the control rig that was from the UE5 mannequin. I'm going to delete this because we have to set up a, I think I have to make a video separately for that one later for making the IKE rig to work. But for this video, I think we're going to just stick with the local version part, the most important. So. As you can see here, we have a locomotion, blah, blah, blah. But I think I'm going to delete everything here. I'm going to do everything by scratch because it's going to be easier for beginners to understand what's going on. So here we have the animation tab, the animation graph tab, which is a place where we can create states so that the animation of the character can change uh, accordingly to the behaviors that is set. So if the character is moving uh, forward, then we're going to be able to play the animation of walking or running depending on the character state. So I think we don't have the shift to run here. So let's create a new one. Let's create a key that we can run. I'm going to choose the left shift because it's easier for me. I'm going to get the character movement. By the way, if you click here on the character movement and go to the details tab, you're going to be able to see that we have all the character movements that you can change here. You can also change them at runtime if you want to. So I'm just showing you that it's possible to change any settings that you are seeing here, any setting that you are seeing here. Okay. So the character movement out of this, we're going to drag off this and say set walk speed. We're going to set the max walk speed. So after pressed, I think the default value is 300, is 500. I'm going to set this value to be 300. I'm going to duplicate this. So when I press the left shift, I want the character to sprint. So I'm going to type 600. And when I release the left shift, I'm going to type 300. So now we're going to change the animation. So by doing that, for doing that, we're going to choose the U4 character and press play. So as you can see, when I move my character, it is in the A poles because we don't have any animation states and conditions set for it to move, for it to play the animation. But as you can see, we can rotate our character to the direction that we want. This is just a basic setup. We can jump, we can sprint. I really like the cloth simulation. It really looks good. All right. So now let's set up our animation blueprint. So we have the animations. We can see the animations here. If you want to preview the mesh, you can click here on the preview mesh 
and change it to the pirate. So you can preview how the animation is going to be played on the pirate as well. So if you drag and drop here our walk animation to the output pose. So this is the result that we're going to get. And if you press play, oh, sorry, we have to connect our, <clears throat> we have to link our mesh to the animation class here. So we're going to choose the animation class here. We're going to choose the ABP UE4, compile save. And if you go to the viewport, as you can see the result, the result is going to be this. As we don't have any condition, uh, the animation is played regardless. Okay, So if you press play here, then the animation is going to play regardless of the state of the character. If I stop, then nothing is going to change. The character is going to keep running, no matter what. So to solve this, we're going to create a new state machine that is going to contain states, that is going to contain transition rules. And those transitions, those transition rules are going to define uh, when we should uh, play the animation of walking, when we should play the animation of idling, or play the animation of jumping. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this, and I'm going to create a new state machine. I'm going to add a new state machine and plug directly into the result. We can name this state machine to be locomotion. So let's go ahead and click on our locomotion state machine. Now here on the entry, we're going to create a new state. So I'm going to right click and add a new state. And this is going to be idling. So we're going to connect the entry to idle. And here we're going to place the animation of idle. Now we're going to create a new state for walk and run. So here, um, so our default state is going to be idle. So the character is not going to be able to move. If you press play here and start to walk, the character is not going to start walking, right? So we have to create a new transition rule so that we can go from the state to idle, so that we can go from the state of idle to walk run. Uh, for the walk run, we're going to create a blend space so that we can uh, uh, smoothly blend the animation cycles of walking and running, okay? If you double click on here on the animation called uh, the animation blend space called BS, which stands for blend space, MM uh, walk run, you're going to be able to see that if you press control here, the animations, uh, the animations are going to be smoothly blended all together. So we are going to be using this blend space right here. I'm just going to drag and drop it and plug that to the result. Now here on the speed, I'm going to go to search and get ground speed. Compile, go back to locomotion. And now that we have uh, our walk run state ready for the input, uh, we need to create a new transition rule so that we can uh, change the state from idle to walk run. So how we can do that? So let's create a transition. And here on this transition rule, we're going to double click on this. And here we're going to create our transition rule. Okay. So I'm going to change the idle to walk run based on the ground speed. So I'm going to get the ground speed. And if the ground speed is greater than three, so we can enter the transition, okay? 
So let's compile and play now. So as we move, we can start to make our character to walk. If you press shift, then you can also run. But when we jump, we don't have anything. But first, uh, we need to have the possibility for the character to go idle. So I'm going to create a new state transition back, a transition rule back to walk run to idle. So I'm going to also get the ground speed. If it's less than three, then we can go to the transition back to idle. So let's say we are walking here and then we stop. And then we go back to the idle state. If you want to see what's going on on your code, on your animation blueprint, you can simulate. So here you can click on this arrow here, go to here, and we can choose the, the option to simulate. So if you click here on the spawn and try to move your character, then you're gonna be able to see what's changing and you're going to probably fix bugs with this. You're going to probably be able to fix bugs with simulating and debugging here. So if you, if you click here on the transition rule, you're going to be able to see that we have a lot of settings here that we can change. So for example, the duration is the duration that it takes for blending uh, the animation fully. Okay, It takes about 2 milliseconds. You can change, I think that's the default value that uh, it's good for the overall, the default animations. All right, so keep that in mind that you can change the duration of the blend time. Uh, and we also have these other options here, but this is a little bit more advanced. You don't need to worry about them now. So we need to make our character to jump now. So we have this jump animation. We have the land animation. We have the fall loop animation. So uh, I think I'm going to play this jump animation as soon as I press the space bar. And the fall loop animation is going to be played after we jump. And the condition, I think the condition is going to be when the character is in the air, okay? It's going to be pretty easy. So I'm going to drag up, drag off the jump animation here, the fall loop, the land. And if you are walking or running, we can jump. And if you go here on this position rule, and type here on the search bar has jumped. We're going to get that. And then when you are walking, we can jump based on this condition here. So when you press play, press uh, the space bar, we can jump. As you can see, our animation is looping. So the way you can fix this is by just going to the sequence player and uncheck this option here to loop animation. So I guess that fixes our problem. But now we have this weird idle position here. This is just the end animation of the... Well, right now what's happening is that we are currently stuck uh, at the end of the frame of the jump. We're currently stuck at this frame right here because we don't have a connection of the states back to idle, for example. But before going to directly to idle, we have also have the fall loop and the land, right? The land is this one. I think this is an additive animation. We can make this additive additive animation type to be frame from this animation. 
selected animation frame and so that we can choose our idle animation. Well, let's just focus on the for loop. So here we can create a new transition rule to the for loop. So I'm going to choose the automatic rule based on sequence player in state. So after this animation of the jump finishes, we can go to the for loop and then we can go to idle. But we can go to idle if the character is not in the air anymore. So we're going to get the is falling variable and we're going to connect that to enter position. So let's press play and test it out now. think this is falling if the character is not falling anymore then we can go to back to idle but I guess we're going to have to get the ground speed again if the speed of the character is less than 3 that means that the character is idling we're also going to get an is boolean. We're also going to get the and boolean. The and boolean. We're also going to get the and boolean. Connect to there. And for loop, we're going to create another transition rule. We're going to copy this. Paste that in here. And I'm going to say if the character speed is greater than 3. And I'm going to compile, save, and press play. Let's see if the idle animation is going to be playing the follow animation. As you can see, it works. The falling animation works, but the landing animation does not work yet. So, so if we're adding the land animation, I'm going to use the local space, but if the local space does not work, I'm going to use the mesh space. So here I'm going to choose the animation. It's going to be the idle animation. And it is going to be the uh, MM idle. So I'm going to save all. And here, as you can see, my animation turned green because I have added the additive animation. I have set this animation to be additive. So we can apply the additive animation. So here it requires a base pose. The base pose can be the walk run. If you just copy and paste the if you just copy and paste the pose here. It's not really a pose, it is just the blend space that is going to be blended. But this is not the right way to do it. But we are going to find out a easier way to do this. So after fall loop, we're going to go to idle, but we're going to go to this transition first and then can go to the idle state. Actually, I'm going to delete this transition rule.
set this to be automatic. Delete this one. And press play to see what happens. I don't want it to loop, so I'm going to disable this one. And set this to be automatic. So I'm going to press play. So here on this transition rule here, I'm going to get is falling. And the character is not falling anymore. I'm going to play the land animation. So as you can see, the character snaps a little bit. This we can fix this by saving the cache of this walk run pose here. So I'm going just to delete this and go to the animation graph. And I'm going to paste that in here, and I'm going to go ahead and save cached pose. I'm going to say this is walk run compile. So here, out of the result, I'm going to get this walk run pose compile, and I'm going to copy this pose here, go to the land, and paste that in there. I'll save and I think that should fix it. I'm going to add a new transition from land to walk run. And I'm going to connect. I'm going to disable this automatic rule based. Go to the transition rule and I'm going to go to enter transition. So if the character is not falling anymore and the character is uh, not running or walking, then we're going to go to idle. Then as soon as the character lands and the character is not falling anymore, I'm going to copy, I'm going to get the is falling. If the character is not falling anymore and the character is walking. Then I'm going to go back to walk run. But this MM land, MM land. We're going to make this so that we can go to this land transition to walk run only when this land animation finishes. So when you press up, so now I press up play. So when I press play here, as you can see, the animation starts to play. The land animation starts to play, but it finishes because of the transition rule. We can fix this by adding a new pin here on the end. And I'm going to get mm land ratio. And if it's less than one, that means that if the animation is almost finishing, <clears throat> then we're going to go to the walk run transition.
Now we have another bug. Which is when you jump, you are in the walking run state for some reason. Let's see why. Yeah, it's because of this. So I'm going to create a new state out of the land to jump. And I'm going to copy the same uh, parameters, but I'm going to copy only this one here. Actually, actually, no, I'm just going to go to the position rule and I'm going to get the jumped variable and connect it to here. Okay. And I also want to do something here inside the, the character blueprint is that when you jump, I'm going to delete this. I want to automatically disable this variable here so that we can uh, prevent any issues. I'm going to add two delay nodes right here. So as soon as we press the space bar, we're going to jump. We're going to enable this variable for a fraction of a second and we're going to disable it automatically. Now we're going to press on play. And there we go. So as you can see, we have a little bit of foot sliding. Let me just quickly add a slow motion feature real quick. So I'm going to get the one key and I'm going to set the time dilation to B.4. And I'm going to reset by setting to one again. I'm going to get a flip flop. So when I press once, it goes between these states here. So when I press play, press one. So now you can see the foot sliding happening. So I think the we can change the max walk speed. It doesn't match. I'm going to choose it to be 200. And here on the character movement, if you type max walk speed, we can also change it to be 200. Let me see this blend space. I think the perfect speed for us is 229 or 300, 230. I think that's the perfect speed for us. So I'm going to type here 230. And I'm also going to add that to the default max walk speed to the character. So as soon as you press play, this value is going to be updated. So when you are idle and you try to jump, it happens this, so that the character cannot jump. We can fix this by adding a new transition rule from idle to jump. So we can drag and drop the variable and add it to the, and add it to the transition rule. Okay. We're going to do the same for the same thing that we've done here. 
We're going to do the same thing that we've done for this transition rule here. I'm going to add a new pin, and then I'm going to get mm length ratio. Get ratio. I think we don't have the ratio of the length. We should have. Just compile, save, and get the length. Here it is, time remaining ratio. If it's less than dot one, So what this means is that as soon as this land animation finishes, then we can blend back to the idle state. Okay. So when you jump, when you are idle, then we can play the animation. As you can see, it plays a little bit the walk animation. So that's because we are always going to use the walk animation to blend with the land. So the way we can do this is that we can get the blend by bool. We're going to get the ground speed. And if the ground speed is greater or equal than three, if it is true, that means the character is walking or running so that we can connect it to the base. But if it's false, then we're going to just drag the mm idle the idle pose to the false. The true event time is going to be dot three for both of them, so that we can have a smoother blend. So when you jump, we don't have that weird bug that we have there. So if you want to also add the land animation as soon as the character lands on the ground, like this. As you can see, when I fall off from a high place like this, the character just keeps walking for some reason. So when I'm walking and... So we're going to create a new transition rule so that if you are falling, we can go to that transition of falling loop. So as you can see, our state is getting a little bit messy. Uh, it's okay, but uh, if you want to learn more uh, about how to create a smoother and like optimized uh, states, then it's going to be a little bit more advanced. So, but that we can get to work on that later. Okay. So now we're going to create a new transition, and this is going to be called. We're going to get the is falling variable, get the not boolean node. And if the character is falling, wait, sorry. If the character is falling, and if you go are walking, then we can go to fall loop. Let me check what's going on here. I think we're going to also have to add a transition from landing to fall loop. Because as soon as we land, we might also have the, the possibility for the character to also fall. So going to get the is falling so if it's true we can enter the transition so as many as transition rules you set in here the less probability of bugs is going to appear of course when you fix one bug there's always comes another bug so that you have to fix it so it doesn't matter if it's like too much messy right now we can always fix this later by creating uh, state alias or conduit and so but so that we can change uh, the way that this transition rule is set so that it's more optimized and easier to see okay
So yeah, guys, that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, you can comment down below. And I see you in the next one. Bye-bye.